So hey everybody, Ernie Hatmaker here, and there's been a lot going on. Um, I've been like super busy, Ed's been super busy, so um, you know, we're posting videos, you know, few and far between. Um, most of you who have asked about the shoutouts, Sunday shoutouts don't really exist in that form. I'm still supporting creators. Um, I'm actually going through... Um, and just catching random people who are on whether they're on live or if they have like a super thanks or super chat or if they have um like paypal or cash app or something like that and i just kind of you know drop little you know goodies into somebody's inbox that way so i'm still supporting everybody um it's just that i am not filming the support as much so um what I'm doing today is basically planting a lot of things out in the garden before um, this big rain comes at about 3 a.m. in the morning, which right now um, it's, you know, the day before. So I've got plenty of time to get things that have been hardened off out there in the ground or in buckets or whatever I'm doing. So let me show you what's going on. So first I want to start here since you guys have seen these um as Dennis the Menace, <laughs> boondocking with Dennis, he called them biodomes, which they really are. I don't even think I'm going to plant these. Oop. Yeah, I don't even think I'm going to plant them. It looks like I'll be able to just start peeling off um, leaves and, and having either stir fry or salad. This is a lettuce and it's about to head up. I had a label, but uh, you guys know me in labels. <laughs> but it's some sort of, of oh it's called winter density lettuce that's what it is so anyway it's gonna head up really nice it's probably gonna have a little crunch to it you guys hear that so anyway um then of course you know the beautiful red stems of the ruby leaf uh swiss chard and i have um some mustard greens these are actually called indian mustard greens and I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> All right, in here, I have more uh, ruby leaf Swiss chard and, and then regular green Swiss chard. And this here is um, some kind of what it's called long spinach. Um, these are gonna go um, in the ground soon. But look, I'm uh, probably not even gonna have to plant all of this there's new leaves grow and I can just pull those and have a little stir fry for lunch today honestly I don't know what I'm gonna eat so Ooh. all right these uh, just recently came out from under grow lights and because the next four days are going to be cloudy, I'm going to cheat the hardening off process. Normally, I wouldn't do this, like, if it was going to be sunny, like normal. But because um, it's going to be cloudy the next few days, they can harden off out here and be just fine. Now, in your climate, it may not work for you. Let me just throw that out there. I've got to put bricks on them because these are not um, heavy enough without the extra weight to withstand the wind blowing all right this is what happens when it rains um these things are not completely watertight uh the water can get in through the sides if you put these bricks and stuff on there so if you're putting a ton of weight on there they just a little bit pop open in the side so if the wind is blowing as it had been like 40 and 50 mile gusts then yeah you might want to not use these however they hold water well enough to not dry out these peat pots um i've got a variety of things in here from um tomatoes that are actually ready to go into the ground but i don't have their spot ready yet a few peppers catnip various uh marigold species um some of these are called Cracker Jack, which I've never seen them, like, up close before. So, it'll be interesting. Some of them didn't do good over the the freeze, which is kind of weird because some did great. And the others are like, we don't like the cold. So, I'm not really sure what happened unless it's because they were closer to the, the air breach, maybe. I don't know. 
But anyway, I won't open all of them because um, I've got lettuces and some and nasturtium and whatnot. My blueberry plant caught some uh, weeds in the side here. But look, I'm getting flowers. See those flowers? It's awesome. All right, here is, well, it probably looks a little different because there used to be a ton of pallets. Um, there were two rows of pallets that were about, I don't know, 20 yards long. And they are now pulled up because they didn't work for us where they were. Um, I have planted in this bed, which last year there was Aramith. This year there's a little bit of my leftover Texas sweet onions and uh, various greens and kale. There's actually some spinach here too. The spinach is doing so good even without watering. Galilee spinach is good for um, drought. Should I say it's drought tolerant? It's easy to neglect it and not lose all of it. Um, and then in these buckets here, there's just various uh, greens here also. Some of the Indian mustards again. And um, some Cracker Jack marigold throughout. Swiss chard. And some of the uh, lettuce. Now in this area here, you can see the greens and marigolds back here. I'm not done planting this out, but around the outsides of this rabbit wire fencing... It's going to be um, peppers planted. I'm going to plant all my peppers together because I heard that you don't have to worry about that, especially if you're not worried about saving seeds. So that's what I'm planning on doing with, with the uh, peppers is putting them out here, most of them anyway. Some of them I'm going to put on their own because they're going to have to go under uh, that uh, arch trellis when the beans come up. And shade it out some. I'm starting the beans early this year. I also have some golden acorn squash mixed in with uh, tomatoes that I just put out recently. And the acorn squash on the other side. Hopefully I can train them to meet in the middle. And I can get them growing well before uh, any of the stink bugs mature. <laughs> I know some of them have overwintered. But anyway, there's three per grow bag, and they're already about 25 days old. So they've really beat the competition. Yeah, this tomato here isn't doing as good as its brother. I actually pulled this head because it just was wilty, kind of like those. That one's doing great. I don't know what happened with that one. But, you know, sometimes they just don't do good when you transplant them, no matter how well you harden them off. And then there's four of the golden acorn squash in that grow bag. Nothing in that bucket yet is actually weeds from last year. Um, these are all different types of long beans. They're all mixed together. Um, there's runner beans. There's, um, what do you call the uh, asparagus beans. There's uh, white asparagus beans and the regular green. There's uh, Kentucky wonder beans. I'm planting the different types of beans number one because they are so beautiful when they go up this arch but then they also provide shade and the the various shapes of their leaves help a lot with that and there are the other beans and there's some beans that are just seed which um i don't know if the birds exposed them or if i exposed them which you know i'm thinking it's the birds i'll blame the birds it wasn't supposed to rain till 3 a.m. and I'm feeling rain on me right now. Um, I showed, I think, the other day that I had strawberries growing in mixed with these peppermint on the outside. Um, then I also have strawberries in these grow bags. In here are what's called Imperator Long Carrots. And once they start greening, I'm going to add um, a layer of deep mulch. Uh, probably um, I'll use straw for mulch in here there's the compost um being it, it's getting a little bit more uh dirty in it there's nothing planted out there last year we did melons out there that was pretty decent and nothing out there just yet out here where this bed used to be um I don't know, maybe 13 by 20. Um, this bed is now 
going to be a lot smaller and it's going to house some of my other greens and I might throw um, some bush beans out yet I, I don't know um, still planning to do something um, with the these a frames and this had some kind of flowers um, some of the sunflowers uh, fell over on top of this A-frame during the winter, so we might get sunflowers out here. I don't know that either. Um, the weeds are starting to come back from all the mulching that I did. All that clover is now really, really taking over. The clover's taking over. <laughs> um, oh, this purple kale. This was a purple Russian kale, and it's just there, and it will not die. I haven't touched it all winter during the icing over and everything it just stayed right there it was here this uh, past summer if you guys remember it was next to um, a german queen heirloom tomato and it just stayed there this is another one and it's in um the sections that um i've started kind of pulling out i tried to pull out one while it was really cold and try to see if there were any yellow jackets in there and uh i had no uh success with that um, I've got a comfrey plant that's out there. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here. I showed it to you in the last video. These peas, and of course some Texas sweet onions, um, but these peas are going to go on this rabbit wire fence out here um, once they get big enough to reach it and kind of start spreading out. Um, I decided to put them in this bed because it might be easier for them to drape over. Um, I'm going to get rid of this box and we're going to replace it. Um, we'll just burn the wood. It, um, the wood wasn't really treated. You can tell the difference between treated wood and, and wood that's not meant to be outside. And this is where the majority are of uh, the Texas sweet onions are. They're planted here amongst the cardboard and chickweed. <laughs> I've got more comfrey coming up amongst all the mullein which I should have already pulled uh, most of these mullein leaves um, and there's a lot of them coming up through the dead grass and I like the little ones for tincture I just think that that they have a lot more of the the mullein's energy in them at the time than when the plant is older and trying to work on flowering and so uh, when you make this tincture uh, with the young leaves it just seems better I don't know strong I don't want to say stronger that may not be the right word and this is the catnip it's inside a blue tote and a white um, um, bucket the white bucket just got planted uh, yesterday and the blue tote this has been planted a few days and so it's more established and it looks better um, I'm sure the white's gonna catch up they're all the same age so anyway the garden while i've only shortened it a little bit um i don't know if you can see those african daisies way out there i'm gonna have to figure out how to put them in a bed um they're gonna be way out by themselves um so i don't know if i'm gonna put brick or something around them to separate them from the rest of the yard but this is it right now the garden still looks brown and drab and you can tell where I've cleaned up and where I haven't heck there's still buckets laying over <laughs> and filled with you know last year's stalks and empty dreams 